welcome back. So uh, to begin with, I just want to tell you what the circle criterion is and um, give you the graphical interpretation for how you apply it. Um, and then we'll go on to see why it's true and find connections to our Lyapunov analysis in um, future lectures. Um, but so, well, what is the circle criterion? Well, it the circle criterion is a stability criterion that can be applied to um, the special setup that we saw before. So we have some linear transfer function g of s in feedback with a sector bounded nonlinearity, and we know the slopes of we have a pair of slopes which will trap the nonlinearity in there. So given a nonlinearity, we should pick the set of slopes that most tightly um, trap that nonlinearity, and then the circle criterion gives a sufficient condition for this setup to be globally asymptotically stable. Um, and it's based on drawing circles on Nyquist plots. So to apply the circle criterion, we have to draw a circle. And there are two important cases. Um, so let's do case one. So case one is when k2 is greater than or equal to zero. And in this case, we draw our circle like this. And this is the one we actually saw before. So here we have minus one over k1 because k2 is positive, k1 must be positive. Um, and then here we have minus one over k2. So we draw our cuttings of the negative uh, real axis like this. And then we just draw a symmetric circle on the top. And this becomes our forbidden region. So that's case one. Case two, and this corresponds to uh, k2 less than zero and k1 greater than zero. And now we draw a circle like this, so minus k1 stays in the same place. And well, we also draw the minus k1 over k2 point, but now it's going to be over here because k2 is negative. So this is the minus 1 over k2 point. And we draw a circle in the same way. But now it's the outside that is the forbidden region. And if you want to imagine these kind of continuously deforming into each other, so we take this minus 1 over k2 point and we're making k2 smaller and smaller and smaller, this gets pushed further and further and further to the left, this circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and actually at the point just when we hit zero, we have a straight line coming up here, and all of this region to the left of the straight line uh, is forbidden, and then, so this is sort of the extreme case, k2 is equal to zero, and then k2 becomes negative, and it jumps all the way over here, and this circle wraps around and comes in. And so we end up, uh, so these two can be continuously deformed into each other. So it's really, there aren't two cases, but maybe it's easier to treat them as two special cases. So we're either in case one or case two. You might think, oh, well, what happens if both of them are negative? If, um, if they're both negative, so if k1, um, so zero is less than k1, it's less than k2, uh, then just replace h. So we send h to minus h and g to minus g. So we just put a minus sign in front of both of these and you'll end up with, if they're both negative, you'll end up back in uh, case one. So these two cases will cover um, any possible choice of sectors. And then the circle criterion states says that um, the origin is a globally asymptotically stable equilibrium point if the Nyquist criterion um, is satisfied. 
satisfied uh, for every minus one over k point in the circle. So we'll see some examples soon, but suppose that um, our transfer function g is stable, so that means that the closed loop will, well, that means we satisfy the Nyquist criterion if and only if there are zero anti-clockwise encirclements. What that means is that we cannot, the Nyquist diagram cannot puncture this circle and it cannot encircle it. So if we were in this case, we need our Nyquist diagram to lie over here. We actually see in this case, we can't encircle this, this circle. No matter what we do, the circle is living out here. Um, so there's no, it's not possible to get any encirclements in case two. Um, so if you're, what that means is if your system is unstable, you can never prove stability if you're in case two, whereas you can if you're in case one. Um, and really the best way to get familiar with these is to just practice them yourselves. We'll do a quick example now um, to give you the idea.